So we have quite a bit of um, spare timber left over from previous jobs and I'm also going to try and utilise that the best I can. I'm certainly not buying any new timber, absolutely unnecessary. So what I've done, look, I've actually measured up all of these decking boards or the offcuts of the decking boards. So we've got a few different sizes there. So most of this stuff here, look, is pressure treated. We've also got some roof battens. Um, we've got quite a bit of this stuff, look, in another part of the garden. So they're your feather edge boards. And we've got four large lengths there, look. We've also got some more bits of feather edge down there, which I need to measure up. We've got some OSB board left over. So that will come in handy. And we have some more odds and sods down here. Right folks, so as mentioned previously, I was measuring up the offcuts for the decking boards. So as we can see, look, we have a number of different sizes here. So what I wanted to know is if we try and standardise those, what are we ended up with? So if we cut these, make sure we have a couple of standard sizes without too much waste. We can cut 11 at 600mm and 12 at 360mm. I do have some longer lengths of decking board, um, so I could cut another 600mm from there. Good morning folks, 21st Century Caveman here. Hope everybody's safe, hope everybody's well. So today I'm going to be striking off another project on my long to-do list and today I'm going to be making a shelter for our cats. So something like this could be used for a domestic cat or dog or indeed um, a feral creature. So as you can see we've got quite a bit of timber left over from a multitude of previous projects and we can certainly make use of these and make some very useful items from these and it will of course not cost a bean. So what we're going to do then, we're going to start cutting down some of these timbers to some standard sizes and of course another aim is to make sure that we minimise waste. Now timber is very very expensive at the minute and um, you know you certainly don't want to be wasting timber when the prices are sky high. So the shorter lengths then will be used to make the sides of the structure and the longer lengths will be used to make the front and the back. So for this project then I'm using a circular saw, it's a corded circular saw with a 4 amp power lithium iron battery made by Evolution Power Tools and something like this certainly makes very easy work indeed of cutting down these sorts of materials. So ideally we should be using appropriate PPE for a project like this. So we're talking about things like gloves, um, a respirator, goggles to protect your eyes and some ear defenders. So we've cut down a number of the decking boards then and then we're going to be cutting down some of these 2x3s which will be used to make the internal frame of this shelter. Okay, so now that most of the materials have been cut to size, I'm going to start the assembly of this unit. Now I'm not working to any plans, I'm just making this up as I go along really. But the thing is, I know what I need to do and how to put this thing together. So this roof then will have a slope, it will be high at the front, low at the back, so it's called a pent roof basically, and that will be used to shed rainwater, and the roof will also be covered in some shed felt, which will make sure that it keeps it completely waterproof. So just to reiterate then, I'm not working to a plan, the important thing about doing DIY projects like this is the fact that you don't need a plan unless it's something quite complex, which this is not. The fact is that once you start making projects and once you start using different tools, it builds up your confidence. And just the same as I'm doing here, look, you will be able to pick up a number of random materials and pull them together and you'll be able to make something fit for purpose and very rewarding from them.
Now it's fair to say that I very rarely use nails these days. I do prefer to use screws. And over the years I've accumulated lots and lots of nails. So I thought I would use them on this project just to try and deplete some of those. Now the reason I don't use nails and one of the problems I experience is the fact that you know you're hitting with a hammer so it'll fix one bit and then it dislodges something else so with screws obviously you don't get that they obviously pull things tighter together and they hold them there as well ultimately though it's down to yourself and nails are far cheaper than screws so as you can see then i'm attaching the sides to the uprights so i've decided to build it this way and once i've actually completed the sides to give me a rectangular box i will then add the floor and then lastly add the roof. So full disclosure then, in my enthusiasm, I did end up this up basically, and I fitted one of the uprights the wrong way around. So, you know, <laughs> it does happen to even the most experienced DIYer, but obviously, you know, it's not a difficult thing to sort out, is it? You know, just smack it with a hammer and then start again. Right, so as predicted, we're back on the drill and the screws, and I'll be using a very thin uh, drill bit just to drill some pilot holes to minimise the likelihood of the wood splitting. Right, so here I'm starting the second layer then. So the walls will be two boards high. So what I'm going to do though is to leave the front of the shelter until last because I'm gonna to need to cut it to size in order that I can make an opening. So here I'm just sussing out how wide to make the opening. I think I decided to make it about five inches. That will be more than adequate for my needs. So yeah, that looks about right, doesn't it? So the other thing I'm going to do then is to cut away the corners of the opening just to make sure that it's not sharp and um, it doesn't catch the cats when they're leaping in and out. And of course the extra design feature will hopefully add a bit of extra curb appeal. So here we can see that we have a very useful offcut 
of 11 millimeter OSB. All we need to do is to measure it and then cut it down to size. Now we also had a number of thin plastic corrugated sheets. So these are waterproof. They're used for protecting floors and surfaces during construction work. And I decided to put a couple of layers on the bottom of the unit, you know, just to uh, make it nice and comfortable to keep the cold out from underneath. And something like this is absolutely spot on. And then we'll affix the base unit to the rest of the structure. I will sandwich them in between. Right, so now the roof then. So we've got a slightly thicker bit of OSB here. This is 18 mil thick. I've also decided that I'm gonna have an overhang of about three inches or 75 mil all the way around the shelter, which will certainly keep the rain off it and keep the occupants nice and dry. I did also find that the most convenient way of doing this was simply to turn the unit upside down to place it upon the OSB just to sort of mark it out really so we can centre it perfectly. So I'm just going to use a couple of screws then to secure the roof to the end of each upright. So we're picking this build up then on another day. So left to do. Well, I need to put four legs on here. I'm just gonna use four different blocks. They're gonna be two by threes cut to size. I also need to fix some battens to the underside of the roof. And the reason is because I'm going to cover the roof with some shed felt, which has been left over from the man cave. And I'm going to basically cut it to size, fold it over, and I'm going to fix the roofing felt to the battens just to make sure that the roof does shed water and none of it falls back into the shelter. And the last remaining thing to do will be to either paint or stain this. I think I'm gonna stain it using some decking stain, which once again is left over from a previous job. So here we've got some roofing battens then left over from the um, the man cave. I'm just going to cut these to size, fix them to the underside of the roof and then basically attach the roofing felt to those. Right, so I did decide to use the leftover decking stain. Now, this is the same stain which I put on the wooden planters. So I'm not saying this is the best stuff in the world because it isn't, but it was left over, it's surplus to requirements, um, it was at a reasonable price, it does the job and it looks nice, so why not?
So I've also done the legs, I've done the bottoms, you know, the ends of those, and also the underside of the shoulder. Reason being the fact that this will go on the rough ground and you will of course over time get grass and weeds growing underneath it. So I just wanted to make sure that I've protected it as well as I can in order to increase its longevity. Right, so the video is coming to an end now then. Thank you very much indeed for watching. Please like, subscribe, share widely with your family and your friends. Bye-bye.